I heard something fall in the kitchen, and a minute later the kitchen door slammed. Why don't you take one or two of the others, I asked. These old things was just done by me and Big D from some tops your grandma pieced before she died. No, said Wanjero. I don't want those. They are stitched around the borders by machine. That'll make them last better, I said. That's not the point, said Wanjero. These were all pieces of dresses grandma used to wear. She did all the stitching by hand. Imagine, she held the quilts securely in her arms, stroking them. Some of the pieces, like those lavender ones, come from old cloths her mother handed down to her. I said, moving up to touch the quilts. D. Wanjera moved back just enough so I couldn't reach the quilts. They already belonged to her. Imagine, she breathed again, clutching them closely to her bosom. The truth is, I said, I promised to give them quilts to Maggie. For when she married John Thomas. She gasped like a bee had stung her. Maggie can't appreciate these quilts, she said. She'd probably be backward enough to put them to everyday use. I reckon she would, I said. God knows I've been saving them for long enough with nobody using them. I hope she will. I didn't want to bring up how I offered Dee when Jero a quilt when she went away to college. Then she had told me they were old-fashioned, out of style. But they're priceless, she was saying now, furiously, for she has a temper. Maggie would put them on the bed and in five years they'd be in rags. Less than that. She can always make some more, I said. Maggie knows how to quilt. Dee when Jero looked at me with hatred. You just will not understand. The point is these quilts. These quilts. Well, I said, stumped, what would you do with them? Hang them, she said, as if that was the only thing you could do with quilts. Maggie by now was standing in the door. I could almost hear the sound her feet made as they scraped over each other. She can have them, Mama, she said, like somebody used to never winning anything or having anything reserved for her. I can remember Grandma D without the quilts. I looked at her hard. She had filled her bottom left with checkerberry snuff, and it gave her face a kind of dopey, hangdog look. It was Grandma D and Big D who taught her how to quilt herself. She stood there with her scarred hands hidden in the folds of her skirt. She looked at her sister with something like fear. She wasn't mad at her. This was Maggie's portion. This is the way she knew God to work. When I looked at her like that, something hit me in the top of my head and ran down to the soles of my feet. Just like when I'm in church and the Spirit of God touches me and I get happy and shout, I did something I never had done before, hugged Maggie to me, then dragged her into the room, snatched the quilts out of Miss Wanjero's hands, and dumped them into Maggie's lap. Maggie just sat there on my bed with her mouth open. Take one or two of the others, I said to Dee. She turned without a word and went to Hakima Barber. You just don't understand, she said, as Maggie and I came out to the car. What did I understand, I wanted to know. Your hair did, she said, and then she turned to Maggie, kissed her, and said, You ought to try to make something of yourself, too, Maggie. It's really a new day for us. But from the way you and Mama still live, you'd never know it. She put on some sunglasses that hit everything above the tip of her nose and her chin. Maggie smiled, maybe at the sunglasses, but a real smile, not scared. After we watched the car dust settle, I asked Maggie to bring me a dip of snuff, and then the two of us just sat there enjoying it. Until it was time to go in the house and go to bed.